But come with me now. Please give me your attention because I need to sow this into the hearts of all of us. This is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Now, while in the spirit of prayer, as I just said, while in the spirit of prayer, I heard the voice of God recently speak to me about the council of heaven. Now, I, I got to be honest, I had not really, I've read it, but I never really paid attention to it. And, and uh, I watched the recent court issue that was happening uh, with the Supreme Court uh, uh, gentleman that was, uh, that's been nominated for the Supreme Court, uh, Judge Kavanaugh. And I watched that whole, uh, what I call and agree is a circus. The whole thing is just done wrong. It was done unnecessary. It was not done the right way. Could have been done with that woman. Miss Ford would have never had to appear before anybody. Could have been quiet. She didn't want to appear. It could have been done behind the scenes. It could have been done where everything that's being done and has been done and is being done right now could have been done without that woman having to be drugged through that. Yeah. Right. Or even Mr. Kavanaugh. It is all they had to have done was release it from the very beginning to the head of the Senate committee there and they would have called a private meeting and they would have handled it off television and it would have saved that woman all of that heartache. And it would have saved uh, Judge Kavanaugh the same thing. But because of the way it's been handled and because of how it played out, I really want to show you something in a picture that parallels in Scripture. Are you hearing me? The court of heaven are the counsel of God. If, you, if you're a note taker, I want you to just put those two statements down. The, the court of heaven and the council or the council of God. Those are two uh, uh, terms and two entities that I want you to focus in on there with me for a minute. Uh, because it really is quite amazing. Uh, but with the current events played out for the last several weeks, especially in this past Thursday, in the court of public opinion, in the council of hell, I'm sorry, council of the senate, uh, the, city, this, uh, the Senate Council there, I became aware that my Father God was talking to me and trying to show me something in the midst of this thing. And uh, I really, really began to take note, begin to listen. I began to study, look at things, and it just kept popping open to me until I really, really felt like I heard God and really God said some things that are going to help us. It may convict us, but it's also going to help us. And first, though, I want you to look so we can verify that what I'm telling you is biblical. Okay? So first we're going to look at God's word to establish that there is such a thing called the, the council of, of God or the court of heaven and that kind of thing. Now, Job chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's all go to Job chapter 2 and verse 1. Now, I'm going to teach, so you got to go with me, all right? I'm going to teach a little bit. This is going to take me just a few minutes to teach this, but I'm going to teach it. So I'm not going to just preach and scream and yell and jump up and down. I, I may. Uh, I may. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not true. But I'm going to try to teach. Amen. And <clears throat> one day... The members of the heavenly court, all right, there we are, came to, again to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser Satan came with them. Wow. All right, so that means that there's a council, there's a membership there. That's interesting, isn't it? And so one day, the members of the heavenly court came again. Why does it say again? Job 1, 6, it already happened once. Now it's happening again in Job 2, 1. So that's why it said again. So he said again to present themselves before the Lord. So the Lord said, I had a council meeting. I brought all the members of the council. Wow. Maybe Michael, the archangel, was there. Maybe Gabriel was there. I don't know who all the membership, I know the Holy Ghost was there. 
I don't know who all was there. Jesus was there. But the Godhead was there. The Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost were there. And the members of the council of God came together. Isn't that fascinating? And I heard God say, and I'm going to repeat this. God said, I have assembled the council of heaven over this nation. God has been in council with the members of the council of heaven as of recently. Wow. Are you still listening? Now, he says, and the members of the heavenly court came together to present themselves. Okay, so that's a key now. This group has to come and they submit themselves. They, they present themselves because he beckoned them to come together. They have to say, here we are, Lord. And it says... He's not a member. The accuser, Satan, came with them. How many you know he's not in the membership? Because all the members got, didn't get listed, but he came along. Interesting. And the Lord spoke to the only one that was no longer a, me a member. Go to verse 2. Where have you come from? The Lord asked Satan. He says, uh, the Lord asked Satan, Satan, uh, where have you come from? And, and he, Satan answered the Lord, I've been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. I believe if you travel like I do, he had to have been watching CNN. <laughs> All right, those of you that travel... How many of you know the only thing you ever see at the airport is what? Okay, so that's not far-fetched. <laughs> so Lucifer, Satan, answered the Lord, said, I've been patrolling. And the Bible says, Peter said, that he goes about looking, roaring like a lion, looking who he may devour. So he's patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Boy, isn't that interesting. He's watching it. It didn't say he was interfering with it. Now, I've been preaching on Thursday nights to those of you that don't come ever. I've been preaching about shaking and how shaking doesn't always have to be based on an end time thing or something the devil does. Because I proved it in scripture that shaking a lot of times is God shaking. Hello. So in this story, Satan uh, is going around patrolling the earth and he's watching everything. Didn't say he was interfering. He's watching. How many of you know there's a lot that goes on and we blame him for and he has nothing to do with it? Now, I'm going to give you another piece. Zechariah chapter 3. I'm setting the stage for what I'm going to say. So come with me today. This won't hurt you to look in your Bible more than one verse. <laughs> Zechariah 3 and verse 1. I may read till verse 10, but again, stay in the in, uh, in, uh, in LT, New, New Living Translation. Then the angel showed me Joshua. That means Joshua. That's the Hebrew way of saying it. Yeshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord. The accuser, Satan, was there at the angel's right hand making accusations against Yeshua. Have you hear that? Now notice, before we change, here he goes again. He's, listen to me. I think, really, saints, we get messed up a lot of times because we just don't know the scriptures. Satan's more interested in what the counsel of God does than what you do. <laughs> you know, you, you, you take Christians today have almost tried to make it a badge of honor be able to say the devil was after you. He don't even care about you. You're not that important. Hello? And... <clears throat> You need to understand, if you get your life right and get your prayer life right, he can't fool with you. 
So he has to go pick on somebody else. Now, look at this. So he's standing before the angel. The accuser of Satan was there. And go to verse 2. He was making accusations now. And the Lord said to Satan, I, the Lord, reject your accusations. Whoa. Now, how do you know that's a big rebu rebuke? You see, Satan was there and he was accusing uh, Joshua. He was accusing him in the council. The council had gathered and he was accusing. And what happens is the Lord, the ancient of days, the judge of all things, says to him, I, the Lord, reject your accusation, Satan. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. How many of you know that's pretty intense? Could you imagine when Satan is accusing you before the Father or before Jesus? And he's there accusing you. And all of a sudden the Lord says, I, the Lord, reject your accusation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That means heaven had to have gone silent. The council had to just sat back in their big chairs and went, whoo, that's heavy. How do you know when God put his finger out and said, I reject your accusations, all the council probably just kind of shrieked and said, okay, I ain't saying nothing. How many of you know if you were in the council of heaven and all of a sudden God just said, I rebuke, I reject that. Mm How -hmm. you know you would probably have the hair on your head and arms standing up? Yeah. Because that's a heavy dude, that's a heavy moment yeah. for God to make that statement. Amen. Can you get this? Yeah. So he says to him, yes, the Lord has chosen Jerusalem and rebukes you. The man is like a burning stick that has been snatched from the fire. If you had the time and you want to read that, I don't have the time. It is a redemptive declaration in Zechariah that God says all the way to verse 10. God said, look, he is like a stick that I pulled right out of the fire. How many of you are glad that you were in the fire like a stick and God reached in and pulled you out? Huh. And have you know, I believe that Paul went on a beach and reached into the fire and he was doing a prophetic act to pull a stick out of the fire when the serpent latched on to him. But all of a sudden, Paul threw that serpent to the ground and said, I've been sent on a mission to go into Rome and rescue people that are like sticks in the fire. He reached in and got me because I was on fire. I could smell hell. I smelt like hell. Some of you that were living in the cesspool of your sin, you know that you were stinking and smelling uh, like the sinner you were. But God reached in. He said, I reached in to the, and got the stick out of the fire. How he said, Lord, thank you. You took my stick out of the fire. Woo. Now, Psalm 82, verse 1. I'm not spending a lot of time on all these because these in themselves are huge. I'm telling a story. Psalm 82, verse 1. God presides over heaven's court. He pronounces judgment on the heavenly things. Woo! I mean, oh, God presides over heaven's court. Now, I'm going to tell you something, saints. That's a courtroom I don't want to go into. Let <laughs> I me mean, hear that. That's a heavy courtroom. And I don't know who's there. I don't know how it's operating. I have a little suspicion. I have a little feeling that there's some of the, of the fellows that we might know that get added to the court. Maybe Moses is in the court. I don't know. But maybe some of them are in the court. Maybe Enoch got a seat in the court. That's why where he was walking, he didn't get there anymore. He just went on and went into the court. 
How many know God can elevate you and put you in a place? Overnight, God can resurrect you and take you to the highest seat. Jesus, on one night, went from the lowest seat to the highest seat. God can turn it around in one minute. Come on. Now, I want you to read the heavenly Gazette published a thousand years ago in Amos chapter 5. This is going to mess with your head now. Listen, you people of Israel. Listen to this funeral song I'm singing. Woo. Go to verse 10. Go to verse 10. How, oh, this is prophet. This is thousands of years old newspaper print. But it looks like it came off the Friday morning news. How you hate honest judges. How you despise people who tell the truth. Good Lord. Listen to me, saints. God spoke to me. I called my wife. She was getting ready to get in bed. I said, get out of bed. Come in here. I wanted her to read it to make sure I was reading it right. How? You despise people who tell the truth. Go to verse, go on, just flip it as I tell you. You trample the poor, stealing their grain through taxes and unfair rent. Uh That's what the Senate does and Congress. Therefore, though you build beautiful stone houses, you will never live in them. Oh, God told me the court of heaven has been assembled while they're having court. God called an emergency court meeting. And the members of parliament of heaven came together and they're in session right now. And Lucifer is there and he's been watching CNN. Oh, Therefore, though you build beautiful stone houses, you will never live in them. Though you plant lush vineyards, go on, you will never drink wine from them. Go on. For I know the vast number of your sins and the depth of your rebellions. Your rebellions. You oppress good people by taking bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Come on, read it again, go on. So those who are smart, keep your mouth shut, for it is an evil time. Come on now. Let's go again. Do what is good and run from evil so that you may live. Then the Lord God of heaven, heaven's armies will be your helper just as you have claimed. Go on. Hate evil, love what is good. Turn your courts into true halls of justice. But perhaps even yet the Lord God of heaven's armies will have mercy on the remnant of his people. This 2018, Amos was written a long time ago. Nothing new under heaven. How you hear? Good Lord, saints. It starts off how you hate honest judges. How you despise people who tell the truth. We're living in a day where people hate you for telling the truth. I'm not here to try that, that whole fiasco. I'm here to report something to you that while that fiasco has been going on, God assembled a heavenly court and the members of his council have come together. They don't come together often, but when they do, there's declarations and edicts and judgments that are coming out of the council of God. And those that have sat like fools will hear and experience The judgment of the counsel of God. Watch it. I fear for some of those people. Some of them that had the truth and hid the truth. Some of those people that have likened themselves uh, to Spartacus. 
that themselves have uh, been on record charged uh, for the same thing. One of the people that's the accuser that came in on the last hour of this thing and accused of, of, of massive rape uh, groups and things. Now the story's out. They did some FBI's already in it. Finding out that uh, she has a criminal record. And she has a record for getting fired at work for having sex with multiple employees. Oh, I wonder if something's just getting regurgitated out of where she's lived. Oh, saints. Oh, saints. You turn prophets loose and you're going to hear God and his finger come out. How many of you have ever read the book of Amos? Sure you have. Never read it like you read it today. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. You still with me? I'm telling the story. The courts and the judgments of man versus the courts of heaven going on at the same time. And the fool has no idea that God assembled the courts of heaven to judge what man does on the earth. The stenographer of heaven has a book called the book of remembrance. The Bible says every idle word, every word you speak is recorded and you're going to have to give an account of every word. Whoa. Are you there? Now there are two things we must see in this little picture I'm trying to draw today. How many of you really hearing me? Watch this. One, there's two things that we got to see. One, Satan the accuser was in these meetings in the councils of heaven. How many of you have seen that I showed you he's there? He's there. Are you hearing me? He's there. He's in the council. He's walking. He's not a council member. He's more like a protester. I'll identify them all. Just they, they, they all fit right in here. But before I take you to the spirit of the Lord and the spirit of God's church and the spirit of slander and gossip, those who carry an evil report, like we just saw with Judge Kavanaugh in the trial, before I take you to the slandering, gossiping, evil reporters you got to go back to God's word the word he gave to me he's assembled the court of heaven are you hearing me today now watch this I'm going to go right back to the natural court in a minute but I need you to hear this I believe that some in the world have already been judged by the courts of heaven. And I'll prove to you scripturally, when the council of heaven comes together, God passes judgment, and that judgment is sentencing those that are on the earth. And that nothing can change the course of that judgment once God's had that meeting. I'll show you. Now, here's a friend of mine, preacher friend, passed away many years ago. His name was Jesse Windley. And uh, he had a church group called uh, Soul Saving Station for Every Nation. I mean, that thing was like, he had a card, you know, a business card, it went all the way on the back. And 
That's a lot of black churches, you know, they put these cards out. Here's my card. Ah, uh, the first apostolic of the first saints of God, the heavenly host of the redemptive plan. And you just keep reading. <laughs> Number one, it's the first. How did it be the first? Have you ever wondered who the first Baptist church was? I mean, that fool's lying right there by putting that on his church. First Baptist. You ain't the first Baptist. But we won't go there. That's the lawyer in me, you know. That, that slips out. I'm, I'm going to set that record straight. Now, Desi is in a meeting, and there are literally a thousand of the top preachers of the day. And this was in 1979. We were at the Virginia Beach Rock Church. We were getting ready to do an event called Washington for Jesus, where we pulled a million people together for prayer on the nation's capital. Never had been done before. It's a unique thing. You can look it up on Google anywhere you want. You'll see a picture of me, or at least a guy that used to look like me. <laughs> I was a kid. And, uh, but you'll see all that. But let me just tell you the quick story. It was a sovereign thing God did. But one of the things prior to it, we had to have a number of meetings, getting all the preachers on the same page. We were at Virginia Beach, and Pat Robinson was there, and Oral Roberts was there, and uh, Jameis Sakarian was there. The head of the Church of God was there, J.O. Patterson. You had uh, uh, Charles Stanley was there. You had all kinds. Uh, uh, you had uh, the Baptist guy. Uh, oh, what's his name? But anyway, Jerry Falwell. You had all those guys. They were all there. It was the preacher of preachers. And you had, back then, Paul Crouch didn't have a television network yet with Trinity, but you had Jim Baker, you had Pat Robinson, you had all that group, and this was a heavy hitters meeting. And I was in the meeting, of course, and Jesse Winley got up. He was kind of known for his, his bluntness. He had one eye that wouldn't stay focused. So when you were talking to him, this eye was like this. And was just looking around, and you kept going, is he looking at me? Where's he going with that thing? <laughs> You know, I told him one day I was going to take him fishing. He said, son, I'm going to take you fishing to New York with two-legged sharks. I told him I was going to take him fishing for sharks. And I meant real ones, you know. He was talking about men. And uh, so this guy was really, really different. Powerful man. I went to his funeral. Never saw anything like it. As far as you could see, down blocks and blocks and blocks. People outside leaning against the wall, weeping and crying because he had delivered and helped those people get out of everything you can imagine. This guy was a powerhouse, and he was standing there, and he got up and said this. He began to announce some things, and he said, I want you to hear this. It was very prophetic. He said, Ted Kennedy is judged by God, and no redemption is available. He was still alive. And the room just kind of shook because no one had said anything like that. But then... When people begin to look into the word, they begin to go, oh my God, it's true. And so I want you to look with me. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 10 <clears throat> through 15. The Bible makes it clear that all of us, Christian and non-Christian, will one day stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Have you hear that? Because of God's grace to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it, but whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. Go on. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on the foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, there you go, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show, hold it now, don't change the page. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. Stop right there, look at me. This is not your occupation. It has nothing to do with your job. I don't care if you're a lawyer or you flip burgers. It has nothing to do with that. This has to do with your position and what you do for God. You're not going to be judged by your career 
or the failure of your career. But you will be judged by what you did for God once he opened your eyes. And it is a trick of the enemy that you will spend your soul chasing after rabbits only to get judged by what you did for God. He's not going to look at you and say, okay, uh, Darlene, remember the day you were at work uh, and, and you didn't have a good attitude? No. He'll deal with that all through the day and all through the week of that time. But when you die, he's going to look at you and say, okay, counsel, show me the record. What did she do for me? Makes you think, don't it? Yes. Look, look a little further. Go to verse 14. If the work survives, the builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames like a stick in the fire. Go on. Hello. Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God, the Spirit of God lives in you? How do you know this is not talking about your occupation? Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. So there is a judgment. At the end of life, there is a judgment. How many of you hear me today? See, a lot of people don't preach this stuff because they don't, they don't want you to know that. For we must all stand before, come on, look at it. We must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or the evil we have done in this earthly body. Have you hear that? We're going to receive whether we, des, you know, we deserve for the good or the evil that we've done. Now, come with me. The Bible makes it clear that all of us, non and Christian, have to stand. That's telling us that everybody. For the believer, it has to do with rewards for our works. And then the unbeliever will be judged according to the works without Christ as their own righteousness. So the unbeliever is going to get judged because of the absence of Christ. And the believer is going to be judged because of the righteousness of Christ. That's why, what did you do since Jesus came in? There's a different court system. You're not going to stand at the same court that you stand at if you're in the righteous court. There's another court, and that court is the court of no mercy. So I'm not going to that court. Hallelujah. Yes. I made a decision. I'm not going to that court. I've been to court. Stood in front of the judge. But this time I get to stand and when he opens the book and he reads this piece of paper that had all these accusations because Lucifer's standing right there. He's going to look at mine and say, I'm sorry, but there's this substance that's been applied to his report and it has eradicated all of the accuser's words and there's nothing on the document. It says that it's clean because of the blood of the lamb. But the one who refuses to listen and give their life to God, he has no righteousness to cover his accuser's report. Now I realized why Lucifer came. Because Lucifer has a right to the unrighteous courtroom. That's why he's standing there. Because he knows you're coming with him. Oh, I wish. Lord Jesus. Are anybody here today? Yeah. Now, this whole thing 
tells us something. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15. If anyone's name was not found recorded in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. Do you hear that? So where is Lucifer going? That's where he ends up. He's your welcoming party. So when you go and stand before judgment, the judge looks at you because he has sheep on the right and goats on the left. And he says, righteous, and the blood of Jesus shows up. And he says, and Jesus stands up in the courtroom and says, Lord, they're forgiven. And Jesus says, the Father says, go, enter into the place I prepared for you. And then all of a sudden, the other courtroom is going on at the same time. Uh, what did you do? I was busy. I, I was at work. I didn't have time. I, 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 I made excuses. I, I loved my lusting. I loved my sin. Lucifer says, <laughs> come with me. Wow. What a picture. Revelation 20, 11. I saw a great white throne and one sitting on it. We know who it is, right? The earth and the sky fled from his presence. But they found no place to hide. Oh, come on, saints. You see, the word, it, 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 some of you, it just goes, eh, oh because your spirit man is dead. Yeah. You should hear that the earth and the sky fled from the presence of the one sitting on the throne. That means the sky was going, ah, and running. <laughs> what kind of... What kind of deity could be so awesome that even the sky and the earth ran? What will you do? Oh. Roll it. Verse 12. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened. Now look, there's books. There's a book of remembrance. There's three or four books. Some of you only know about the book of life. But you better remember, there's a book called the book of remembrance. And the stenographers of the, of, of, of the heavenly host of, of that assembly, they, they're jotting it down. And the dead were judged according to what they had done. As recorded in the books. The sea gave up its dead. Those that drowned sailors came up out of the watery grave. And the depth and the grave gave up their dead. Oh my God. What a day. Out of the ocean they're coming up. Out of the graves they're coming up. Spirits. And all were judged according to their deeds. Ooh, my God, my God. The lake of fire is the second death. Go ahead to verse 15. And anyone whose name was not recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Oh, my. Come on, saints. Now, this tells that these judgments happened before their death. Oops. You better listen. These judgments happened before their death. Let me show you. But there is a story, there's a strong evidence that a general verdict regarding their eternal fate happens before they passed away. How many of you know in court, you go to court, you get charged, and they have a thing called sentencing? What you and I just read is the sentencing phase. I'm going to show you. The judgment happened here before you got there. So when you get there, ain't no pity tears. You can't negotiate. 
You can't flim flam your way out of this. Some of you have done that all your life. You can't talk your way. You can't look good. You can't do any of that. It's done. This is a sentencing phase. Wow. We got to stop playing saints. Now let's look closer. John 5, 24. I'm going to prove my point and I'm going to take you to the back part of this, what I started with. I'm going to pray for you. You still with me? John 5, 24. I tell you the truth. How many believe I'm telling the truth here? I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. Oh, Jesus says, I tell you the truth. Those who listen to my message and believe in God and that God who sent me have eternal life. Right there. You're not going to heaven to find out if you get it. They will never be condemned for their sins. But they have already passed from death into life. Court has already been settled before you get there. The sentencing phase is just a preliminary piece to get you either in heaven or in the lake. Oh, Jesus. My, my, turn it on. Roll it over. I assure you that the time is coming indeed. It's here now when the dead will hear my voice, the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen will live. How many know the Bible says we were dead, men? We were dead in our trespasses and sin. How many know I've already been dead? See, I've already been to heaven. Because I was in the loins of God. I was in his mind when he made everything that he made. So I was in the loins of God when he made everything that he made. So I've already been where he was at when he made it all. But also, also, I've already died. You were dead in your trespasses and sins. Are you hearing me today? Now, so if the true believer has already passed into life before the physical dying happens, the same have already been condemned though they are alive. So you and I, we passed into life, it said there in John, because we believe that Jesus is the Lord. We gave our hearts to him. We got born again. And now we believe so we have eternal life. Now, here's the key, and I'm landing. John 3, 18. John 3, 18, put it on the board, look at it. I'm not gonna let you sit there and be dumb today. I want you to be smart. I want you to get smart like me. I want you to get this. John 3, 18, Jesus says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. Look at verse uh, 36 of John 3. Put it on the board. And anyone who believes in God's Son has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the Son will never experience eternal life. But remains under God's angry judgment. Wait a minute. You're already under judgment. And it's angry judgment. Believing here on the earth is what moves you from being under that judgment. Whoa. Some of you are saying, oh, this is too much Bible. I didn't come to hear all this Bible. The key is that legal standing with God is rendered while we are still alive, not after we die. How many understand now what I've just said? How you know that when you die, you're not going to get up there and negotiate? I'm sorry, but I'm here to tell you, you only get one chance here on the earth. And you will die in your sin and you will never get another chance. 
And that's why Lucifer is there. I kept wondering, why does he keep going to these meetings? He's supposed to be there. He's the jailer. He's there to say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, he can't talk. He can't say anything. His accusations won't change the condition of God's already determined plan. But the one that said no to him, he's there. Come, you come up with me. He's the master jailer. Now, oh, Lord. So it is possible that God can render his judgment while people are here on the earth? Yes, it is. I should have said, is it? Yes, it is. Here's why. 1 John 5, 16, 17. 1 John 5, 16, 17. I got to read this, so get it on the board. Now, if you see a Christian brother or sister sinning in a way that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give the person life. But there is a sin that leads to death. And I'm not saying you should pray for those who commit it. Go on. All wicked actions are sin, but not every sin leads to death. There is sin that God says no forgiveness. There is no redemption. Come with me. Matthew 12, 32, Jesus said their sins will not be forgiven. In the age, in this age are the one to come. Look at what it says. Matthew 12, go on, put it on the board. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will what? Never be forgiven. Either in this world or in the world to come. Jesus says, in the age or in the one to come, in the physical death, they will never be forgiven. Acts 5, 3 and 9. Verse 3, verse 9. You say, oh, what is that? Blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Telling the Holy Spirit no. Rejecting the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of God. That is a sin that you cannot be forgiven. But I'm going to show you something that's going to shake a few of you. Wow. Acts 5, 3. You got it? Peter said to Ananias, you know the story. Why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. Boy, I should have used that for the offering this morning. <laughs> Boy, I missed it. Boy, I could have used that this morning. I should have been paying attention. <laughs> Verse 9. That's Ananias, you know. Peter said... How could the two of you even think of conspiring to test the spirit of the Lord like this? The young men who buried your husband are just outside the door, and they will carry you out too. The man lied to the Holy Ghost. This is New Testament grace. This is New Testament grace. Lied to the Holy Ghost, and God killed him. And then when the woman came in, God killed him too. Some of you have no idea why you go through what you go through. And it's because you're on the list of judgment. You're on the wrong book list. What's the point? Here's the point. A person can get to a place on the earth where in their sin or their disobedience is so great that the courts of heaven render a decision regarding their fate even before they die physically. 
Uh, you don't know that. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 30, 31. I'm going to confirm it one more time. And then I am going to land. Because I'm going to pray. How many of you got anything right now? How many of you understand this picture? We still had a court just last week on Thursday. I'm using that to show you that heaven, God told me I assembled the council this week. Now, saints, I, I can only tell you it shook me that God would let me even understand that he assembled a council. Whoa. Look at John uh, Hebrews 10. For we know the one who said, I will take revenge. I will pay them back. He also said, the Lord will judge his own people. Go on. It is a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Lord Jesus. How do you know, saints? We got to wake up and realize we're dealing with God. And if God calls the council and he passes judgment... It's not because you got judgment there. He passed judgment before you got there. It got passed on you here. You don't want God to not put your name in the book. So let's look. We're closing. Let's look at this closing now. Yes, God is full of grace. Mercy, he's good. Can you say amen to that? Amen. And this is to those who know truth. This is to the mature believer, not the prodigals who are young in their faith. What I mean by that is this. What I've just shared with you, and, and there's evidence, I'm going to read it. This is to the mature Christian. Because the Bible tells us that if we walk away and come back, we're trying to crucify the Lord twice, and we can't do it. So the backslider has to understand, when you go away, and you leave God, and you denounce God, he doesn't always give you an entrance back. But in mercy to the young believer like the prodigal, he makes a way for you to come home. But not to the mature. To the one who knows to do right and does not do it. Amen. To the one who knows to do right and does not do it. Amen. Say it out loud. Amen. To the one who knows to do good and doesn't do it. Amen. When you know to pay your tithes, when you know to do what's right before God and you don't do it. Amen. Wow. Now we need to see that the New Testament is much more serious. Saints, it's much more serious. Come on. It's much more serious than, than some compromising preachers and saints would like to admit. Oh, Lord, here we are. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. You got to go there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. Come on. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Amen. Dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. Hello, you hear this? Yes. Is that what it says? Yes. Did I read the truth? Yes. Look at verse 27. There's only the terrible expectation of God's judgment already pronounced and the raging fire that will consume the lake that will consume his enemies. Go on. 
For anyone who refused to obey the law of Moses was put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and have treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. We've insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who's tried to bring us God's mercy. You see, saints, in the modern church today, you know, I, I just read a whole story and listened to a girl's testimony. One of the top leaders of one of the biggest worship leader groups in one of the worship churches, her testimony of her and her husband now is that they went as far as you could go and they're now atheists. Why would you be surprised? Why would you be shocked? When you go in areas where God never meant us to go, and you try to make a new doctrine, worship did not start with music. Worship was the adoration of a living God. Moses didn't have a tambourine going into the Holy of Holies. Aaron didn't go in singing, my God reigns. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen now. The floodgates open after these churches have exhausted a non-biblical doctrine They'll have people spread out all over the place that are hurt, wounded, lost, and have no biblical structure to stand. And the accuser of the brethren will work overtime. power of the world, can you hear this? Amen. Cannot be brought back to repentance since they've crucified afresh the Son of God again in their hearts. Hebrews chapter 6, just look at it. Verse 1, Hebrews 6, Therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage of this thing. If you read this, it says, let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again and again, and let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we will need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. I mean, you know, saints, the church needs to grow up and go on with life in God and stop having to rehearse the rudimental fundamentals of Christianity every week and every year and never grow up. And it ain't just the church, it's preachers who preach messages to get a hold of your emotion, get you to an altar so you can go home and keep the same mess you've always had. You do not come to an altar and ever walk away changed. You come to an altar and leave your garbage so you can go back and get changed. But we've designed to come to the altar, boy, I'm gonna pray for you and spit all over you and you're gonna get changed. No, you're not. You're gonna come to the altar, but that's the beginning of the transformation of your change. Behold, all things become new. It's a new day. Hence the verdict was already been given. Court has been assembled in heaven and judgments, judgments are being passed down. I would not want to be in Senator Feinstein's life. Because the accuser 
of the brethren is working in front of us. A prophet was just here, Bonnie, her and her husband, Keith. She said to me in the back, we were having dinner Sunday because they had to go to the airport, so we brought the food in so we could eat. Here's what they said. This is what you need to hear. Those of you that want to stick your head in the sand, you can, but this is what you need to hear. The, hit, the hit, hideous thing we're watching today unfold in Congress, the natural, has even greater consequences for us in God's courtroom. The accuser of the brethren, Satan, must not get us to be his witnesses by whispering the evil reports spoken from Satan's false accusations. James 3 tells us the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. It defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is, is, it is set on fire of hell. Come on. How do you know that some of us, this prophet said to me, she said, I have a word from the Lord that there's been a flood of accusations against this church. She said, yes, it's from the outside and the enemy has tried to keep this church from fulfilling its destiny. But she said the worst accusation has come from within. In lieu of what we just saw in the courtroom of the hell of called Senate, we must stop and ask ourselves: am I Satan's witness on the earth or am I Jesus' witness on the earth? Am I repeating what the accuser says or am I repeating what Jesus said? Acts chapter 1, chapter 2 tells us to do what? Go in Jerusalem tarry there, and when you endued with power from on high, you will be my witnesses. Which courtroom do you want to be called on to be a witness? Let's go back to the courtroom for half a second. Here we are. God's on the throne. Jesus is there to, to receive us. Satan's over here fidgeting. Because he hasn't seen the book yet, but he's seen you. And he knows. Boy, he knows. And he can't wait till the father looks down and says, um, nope, not here. He goes, yep. Because he takes and says, come with me. You're going to join me in my lakeside cabin. It's a little warm. But the view is tremendous. <laughs> and while you're there, since you witnessed against your brother, you need to know that was on your sheet and that's what put you here. Because you joined the accuser of the brethren. And when courts set, he found you guilty before you ever got there. I read in Hebrews chapter 12 further a story about Esau. Esau, it says, sought the blessing, but he found no place for repentance, though he sought it with all of his tears. There was nothing for him. He lost his inheritance. He lost it all. I pray today, before you move, start fixing your books and doing all your coats and things, just be still a minute. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray over this church. Lord, I know the prayers of the righteous have held back the onslaught of the liar 
from without. The witches that moved across the street and shot their accusations at this church for years, they have been silenced to the point where they actually moved. But Lord, we must deal with our voice. And have we become witnesses for the accuser? Are we witnesses for the Savior? You can feel the weight of this word. I got a vision when I saw this courtroom. I saw some of you. I physically saw you. And you were talking as though God was deaf. And I started to cry. And I asked the Lord, don't show me. I don't want to see it. And the Lord made me look. And it, it, it. And when I saw that judge cry where his little girl, I think 10, had asked that Jesus would bless the lady, I just, I cried. Because I saw the sting of the pain that comes when we unbridle our tongue when it is dipped in Lucifer's lies. And when it comes forth, it sets marriages on fire, nations on fire, churches on fire, and it causes hell to be loosed. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus, or you're backslidden. The grace of God is extended to you today and it awaits your name to be written down. And all you have to do is repent of being against God and against his purpose and against his way and repent and say, Jesus, forgive me. I want today to make it right with my Father. I want it changed today. If that's you, no one looking around, I'm going to pray for you. Just slip your hand up and say, Pastor, pray for me. I need to get it right today. I need to get it right today, and I need to make sure I don't miss the day of God. If that's you, hold your hand up quickly so I can see you. Just hold it up and say, Pastor, pray for me. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray right now that you open their eyes and that today was a day that God you ordained so they might hear the truth. Lord, cause today to be the greatest day of their life. May they hear May they hear the voice of God. May they hear the voice of God. May they not treat this as the voice of man, but may it be the voice of God to rescue them and their family, their children, and everything that's around them. Bless them. Open their eyes today in Jesus' name.